this is the day. Listen, you lit Facebook up yesterday, and I want to say thank you. And we're going to go right back into uh, what it is that God has given us for today. So I want you to grab your Bibles. Listen, we, we are um, not playing with this. This is very, very serious stuff. This is very real. This is very much a part of your day-to-day -day life, this time together. We spend an hour or so together, and we're building you up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. We're building you up in your most holy faith so that you will be a witness of the power of Jesus and his Holy Spirit. And that is, that is, that's all I got, folks. I got this to give you, and I thank you for receiving it. I thank you for taking it all over social media, taking it in your families. You're taking it everywhere. And I am just so pleased and so proud of all of the Pentecost School of the Holy Ghost uh, pandemic errors that are sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ and the power of his Holy Spirit. Now, listen, I want you to look here. Grab your Bibles for just a moment. Grab your Bibles for just a moment here. Praise God. God is God is so, so sweet. I want you to um to move. Glory to God. Glory to God. So I was just kind of reading uh through through this. Hallelujah. And how the spirit of God was upon Jesus of Nazareth. That just, just really just, you know, continues to grab a hold of my heart. How the Holy Spirit and Jesus worked so powerfully together. Uh, go to John chapter number three. Watch this. And uh, we are still looking at this from the perspective of how the Spirit of God and how Jesus worked together. Hallelujah. How they worked together. Join me in, um, I want to look at, I want to read it all, but I can't. <laughs> I want to look at verse 34. John chapter number 3, verse 34. 34. I want you to get there. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And for your contextual background, I want you to look at, if you will, look at verse 22. We are teaching on God, the Holy Spirit. That that's, that's who we're teaching. And again, I repeat, we are not uh, we are not um, elevating Holy Spirit above Jesus, but we are elevating Holy Spirit so that you understand the equality of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. All right. I have to say that. Good morning. Coming up the timeline, Betsy Willis. Good morning, Sonia. Good morning. You know, I didn't already got it. <laughs> Mother Pearl, I know you love Jesus. I want you to love the Holy Spirit too now. Amen. Oh, how you love Jesus, Mother. I want you to love this Holy Spirit. Put that in there too. Oh, how I love Holy Spirit. Praise God. Betsy Willis, good morning. Good morning, May Conley. Yes, coming up the timeline. So we are part of the way. So for context, when we talk about being weighty in the Spirit, when we talk about understanding the distinctives of Holy Spirit in our lives. All right, watch this. Now, John is still uh, testifying, uh, verse 22, and then 23, John was baptizing at Anon near Salem because there was plenty of water. And people were constantly coming to be baptized. This was before John was put in prison. Amen. An argument developed between some of John's disciples and certain Jews over baptism. They came to John and said, Rabbi, 
that man who was with you on the other side of Jordan, the one you testified about, well, he is baptizing and everyone is going to him. Now, listen to this. To this, John replied. I need you to see this. I'm in John chapter 3, verse 27, all right? To this, John replied, a man can receive only what is given him from heaven. Baby, I almost told, I'm about to tear this place up already. <laughs> wow, I need you to underline that in your Bibles because we're talking about the distinctives in your life, my life, that is given to you by Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit has anointed me. Holy Spirit has anointed you. And it's vital. I'm, I'm still dealing with the vitality of knowing the distinctive of your oil. Your oil. Knowing what is your oil purposed in your life for. Holy Spirit is given to all who will receive it. The Bible says that whoever asks shall receive. Whoever knocks, the door shall be open. Whoever seeks shall find. That's the scriptures. 11 of Luke, he lets us know that if you ask for the Holy Spirit, he will give it to those who ask. Now, from Holy Spirit, God, Holy Spirit, God, the Holy Ghost, proceeds an anointing. Glory, Shanda Namando. Good morning, Ambassador Charlie Thompson. Coming all the way up the timeline. Malika Jefferson, good morning. Pastor Nika Wilson, good morning. Demetrius Norman, Stephanie, good morning to all of my union folks. Good morning, God bless you. Pastor Margaret Crosby, good morning, Victoria Miller. Glory to God. Listen to me very carefully. I want you to understand what I'm saying to you because it is vital that you understand this. From Holy Spirit, good morning, Pastor Valerie McCune. Good morning, Andrea Carter Blair. Good morning, Aaron Nickel, coming up the timeline. Good morning, Karen Love. Good morning, hallelujah. From Holy Spirit, Jacqueline Hollingsworth, thank you. Bianca, flows an anointing. An anointing. An anointing flows from Holy Spirit to your life. Dr. Margaret Crosby, good morning. And when that begins to become evident in your life, Holy Spirit from him proceeds an oil, proceeds an anointing. And that anointing is distinctive for the purpose that you have in the earth. So, you give your life to Christ, amen, the resurrected Lord, the Christ, the Messiah. You give your heart to Jesus. You accept him as your Savior. Praise God. And then you are baptized for the remission of your sins. And then you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That's the full gospel of Jesus Christ. And that gospel has the power of God unto salvation. The full gospel. Now, you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. The Spirit of the Lord has come upon you. And now, he says, you shall be my witnesses. You shall take what has happened to you into your spheres of authority, into your places of culture. You will be my witness. The same spirit that came upon me, that was integral in my life, in my ministry, is the same spirit I now baptize you in, if you ask. 
Hallelujah. If you ask. Now, you have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. You have experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now you're being filled because you're, you're building yourself up in your most holy faith every day. You're speaking in tongues. You're communicating with Holy Spirit. You're falling in love with Holy Spirit. You're engaging him in all of your choices, all of your decisions. You're not doing anything contrary to the Holy Spirit. He now has become your GPS, your your guide, your, he is your global positioning system. He now is your spiritual positioning system. He now is beginning to develop you in your spiritual intelligence. You're walking in the Holy Spirit. You're perfecting holiness in the fear of the Lord. You're working out your salvation. You're studying the word of God. You're developing a devotional life. All of these things in terms of the spiritual maturity and development and discipleship of every believer. Now, you have to begin to inquire of the Lord. What problem am I here to solve? I need somebody to write that in the comments. What problem am I here to solve? After you have gotten all of the goodies, you've collected Hallelujah, from door number one, door number two, door number three, door number four, door number five. He blessed you. He healed you. Glory to God. He saved you. He filled you. Etoshi, mandu kushikanda. Now you're enjoying the fellowship and the communion, the koinonia of believers. You're in a good home church. You're in a place where the spirit of the Lord is free to move and the spirit of God is, is, is operative in that place. And you can tap in. You find the Bishop Carlotta Vaughn on social media. You meet an evangelist, Carlotta Harris, somewhere around the world. And you now begin to be drawn to the teachings of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that delicious? That's simply delicious. But now you have to come to the point in your life where you're no longer guzzling up the goodies. You're no longer a guzzler. You're no longer a consumer. You now have to begin to petition the Lord. You have to begin to inquire of the Lord. What problem am I here to solve? Oh, somebody, this is going to help you with your homework. What problem? I'm not talking about your career. I'm not talking about your job, your academic pursuit. All of that can play into it. But Holy Spirit has now been so good and so rich. My God, in your life. You're learning. You're, you're becoming a pneumatologist. You're, you're, you're studying pneumatology. You love Jesus. Now you're learning to love Holy Spirit. You're working it out in your theology. You're working it out. Now you have to come to a place where you are no longer a, a guzzler, a consumer. Now, Holy Spirit, I inquire of you, Isha. What problem am I born to solve? See, you haven't had a problem. Heaven had a problem. There was a sin problem in the earth. And yes, the Christ cried out, prepare me a body. When he heard the call, who shall I send? Who will go? There's a problem in the earth. And Jesus, the Christ, came as a result of solving a problem. But before there could be a birth of Jesus, there had to be a birth of John. There will always be a proclaimer of you. There will always be one that comes before you to declare who you are. So I got a problem, all right? So while 
Mary is going to solve this problem. Elizabeth, come forth. I need you to solve a problem. What problem is that? Lord, I'm going to need you to give birth to a baby. You'll call him John. And he shall be the forerunner. He's going to solve a problem. Because I'm going to need somebody to baptize him. I'm going to need someone to declare him. I'm going to need someone to validate him. And you're going to birth that. And you're going to solve a problem for him. And the Bible says that John was filled with the Holy Ghost in the womb. <laughs> he was filled with the Holy Ghost in the womb. You need to hear this today. You've got to hear this. Because now he's going to solve a problem. You've got to understand how this Bible, how the economy of God is connected to problem solvers. The only reason that Adam was created, the Bible says that God had no one to till the ground. So Adam was created to solve a problem. Eve was created to solve a problem. We all have been born into this earth to solve a problem. And when we have come to the knowledge of Holy Spirit, now we have supernatural divine power. To solve a problem. We have the advantage now. To solve a problem for God. God has problems. Somebody going to preach that. God has problems. <laughs> God has problems. And the only way that God can get his problems solved in the earth. Is that human kind was come forth and must be able to hear, to know what problem they are born to solve. What problem are you born to solve? Now, that's going to help you, see, because the distinctive of your oil, listen to me, the distinctive, the oil that proceeds from the Holy Spirit in our lives, is given to us as the power of attorney, the legal authority to do what you have been born to do. That's to solve a problem. What problem does God have? That he would so graciously give you the Holy Spirit that you would have guaranteed success in solving that problem. But here it is. We don't like what our problem is. We see other stuff. We want to do that. We get over here. We want to do that. But that's not the problem you were born to solve. That's why you have no anointing for it. You only have the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So that you can solve the problem that you have been born to solve. Watch this. So now Jesus has been baptized of John. And now the Bible says, Dr. Felicia, now the Bible says, now the Bible says, I just hear the Spirit of the Lord say this, the Holy Spirit says today, I'm going to solve your frustrations. Many of you are frustrated financially. You've been You've been frustrated emotionally. You've been frustrated. You've been frustrated, frustrated with this and frustrated with that and frustrated with this and your puzzle pieces don't fit and, and you're frustrated and, and there's a restlessness. There's a frustrate. Holy Spirit says today, I'm going to make clear to you the source of your frustration. Mm. Wow. Wow. Many of you are gifted in many areas, but you're not anointed in that area. 
What you say? I said, many of you are gifted in many areas, but you're not anointed in all of those areas. We are gifted. We are gifted in multiple areas. Many of us say, wow, 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 wow. Oh, I can do this. I can do this. I can do it. But you're not anointed for that. You can do that because gifts and callings come without repentance. Some of you are educated in certain areas, but that's not your anointing. I have a degree in nursing. My first professional job was as a nurse. I started as a medical assistant. Then I went to LPN school. And then I went to uh, the community college, opened up and opened up a new nursing program. I was part of that first class. I'm always the first somewhere. <laughs> and I worked in that. That's my first profession. I loved it. I wanted to be a nurse in the Navy. They had some Navy nurses that came to the school and I saw those uniforms and I said, I want to be a Navy nurse. I didn't get to go to the Navy. My daughter went, but I became a nurse. That was a heart's desire coming up the timeline, Alfred Benyard. That was a heart's desire. That was a desire in my life to be a nurse. And God afforded me the opportunity. I raised my girls in nursing. I went to work every day, put on my white uniform, my cap, praise God. It was so, so exciting to get cap day, to get my pen. It was so exciting. That's, that's where my education is. But what problem am I born to solve? So you've got to find that. You, you've got to be able to identify in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And our problem is we gouge through our eyes. We gouge. We have the same sin problem as Eve. When she saw that the fruit was good for eating, when she saw it, she got deceived. We got the same problem. When we see something, we want it. When we see a ministry, or we see this, or we see that, or we see a house, or we see a car, or we see something, we want it, we go after it. But is that a distinctive for your life? And you can spend your whole life chasing stuff that don't chase you. Oh, Shabbat. All right, watch this. So now, Jesus is baptizing. He has, his ministry has begun. The Spirit of the Lord has come upon him. And now he has gone into the wilderness, tempted of the devil. He's, a, he's come out of the temptation with the power of the Holy Spirit. And he begins, he begins his ministry. He begins to pick his disciples, his core group. He begins to choose them. You ain't got to choose him. My God, he chooses us. Ain't that God? <laughs> yeah, glory to God. Hallelujah. My Kasaya. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. And now he is baptizing. Now he is baptizing. All right? Are you hearing this? So watch this. <laughs> Dr. Chalice, pray. I got preachers all around me. <laughs> they hollering and preaching. Lord Jesus, to this John replied, a man can receive only what is given him from heaven. My God, y'all going to, y'all going to, y'all going to, y'all, if y'all don't shout, I'm going to find and beat you. <laughs> well, a man can only receive what is given him from heaven. You know, sometimes I get a little frustrated because I see what I believe to be error in so many leadership spaces. So I can get like, you know, I just want to go. And so the Lord has to remind me, you're not the police. <laughs> you're not the police. You can't go after every fivefold ministry gift and sit them down. Just calm your mind. I got this. Because I see a lot of stuff that goes on in leadership and it, it it grieves me sometimes because it's just so crazy like where did you get that from but the lord let me know that's that you're not the police i didn't give you that that's that's not your anointing that's not your anointing. you keep you keep getting my people to pentecost if they get to pentecost they'll get clarity i was like whoa okay that was this morning <laughs> he spoke that to me about 1 30. i'm like okay got you because I just, I get disturbed. 
because I want to teach people so bad. <laughs> I had an extraordinary experience. I saw the authentic. And once you have ever seen the authentic, everything counterfeit will disturb you. But it doesn't necessarily mean it's counterfeit. It may be premature, maybe early or whatever. But God said to me that this morning, he said, you're not the police. You don't have to police that. You can only receive what I've given you. That is your measure. Can anybody see that? In, come on, where's Joyce King? Do you have a key? Come on, Dr. Hyman. She said, frustrated because you are operating in your gifts, but not in your anointing. Good morning, my daughter, Shannon Holmes. Good morning, my precious. Good morning. My children are here. You know that's all right. I love it. Watch this. So the disciples was being shady of John. John says, I'm saying, hey, whoa, whoa. You know you the baptizer. You, you Do you know he baptizing? You baptize him. Yes, yes, yes. But listen, a man can receive only what is given him from heaven. Good God Almighty. You yourselves can testify that I said. Verse 28, I am not the Christ, but I am sent ahead of him. Verse 29, the bride belongs to the bridegroom. Good God Almighty. And the friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him and is full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. Good God. Whoa, glory, glory. My God, look at here. <laughs> I, I hate the Christ. <laughs> I told y'all from the beginning. You asked me, was I the Messiah? I told y'all no. I told you. You said, wait, are you a prophet? No. Are you alive? No. Who are you? I'm a voice. I'm a voice. Crying in the wilderness. Prepare. I'm preparing the way of the Lord. I'm not the Lord. Oh, shut up. Hey, shut up. Maybe they all say. Come on, LeVon Watson. Coming up. To Listen, you got to know. And then if not, folk will try to get you offended. Folk will try to get you all juiced up to have an attitude about something you don't have control of. You can only receive what heaven gives you. I don't care what they ordain you. I don't care what they call you. I don't care what it is that you have studied for a thousand years. You can only receive from what heaven gives you. That's the portion for you. That's all you can get. Some he gave five. Some he gave two. Some he gave one. You cannot receive what he didn't give you. It's not by osmosis. It's not because you hang around it. You just going to become that. No. What is the distinctive of the oil on your life? Now, watch this. Watch this. He said, look, I told y'all I'm not the Christ. <laughs> hey, hallelujah. The bride belongs to the bride. That's so good, John. The friend just attends the bride. I'm, I'm attending. I'm the attendant. I'm the usher in this thing. I ain't the bridegroom. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. See, John was very clear. Come on, Pastor Janice Rob, of, of, of what he was not. If you would get that verse 27 in your spirit, you will not err again. If you will get that in your spirit, let it break up the fallow ground right now. Let it bulldoze every false perception. Let it go in right now like a jackhammer. And do a deconstruction of everything that you think you were to do that God didn't give you to do. Come on, let the word work. Let the word do its job. Let it bulldoze. My God, let it rebuke. Let it, let it get you in order. Let it crack your back. You can only receive what is given to you from heaven. That's why nothing, nothing about me. Can't nobody compete with me. And I can't compete with nobody else. Because they only got what God gave them. I only got what God gave me. I cannot compete with anybody. Where I stand in my anointing, I'm unrivaled. 
When I'm flowing in the oil on my life, I have no competition. My Savior God. John said, I'm flowing in my anointing. You will not make Jesus my competition. There is no competition between the bridegroom and the attender. Ain't no competition. I'm not the Christ. Why would I get, why would I, get, why would you, why are you being messy? Why would you bring that to me? I told you from the beginning, I'm not the Christ. Woo! You done heard so many prophecies and so many, so much mess over your life. You're going to be this. You're going to be that. You're going to be that. Listen, I ain't got nothing to do with people and what they say over your life. But you better carve out. You better find out what God has given you. You better know for yourself what problem you've been born to solve. And you better be able to clearly articulate it. You can't compete. Pastors, you can't compete with another pastor. God bless you. God bless you. You can collaborate, but you can't compete. Because what you have is not what they have. And what they have is not what the next person has. Stop it. That is a root of frustration that you are not ordained to have. Watch this. I'm almost done here. <laughs> he says, the joy for me is to hear the bridegroom's voice. Ain't no competition here between me and him. That joy is mine and now is complete. He must become greater and I must become less. You got to know. You're not, you got to know, you got to know how to be flexible. You got to know when you are the greater and you got to know when you're the lesser. You'll never rival your leader. You'll never stand in your leader's face and be their equal. You will ne that will never happen. You will never be your parent. You will never be that. You can never stand in your parent's face and dishonor them. You are the lesser. You can never be your boss. Don't care how smart you are. You can never be the owner. You are the lesser. You've got to know how to be the lesser. And you've got to know in your anointing that you are the greater. Woo, some of you so puffed up and arrogant. You done got so full of yourself. People done stroked your ego and scratched you up and oiled you down and spoke over you. And look, ain't nobody said nothing in the heavens. So that's not your measure. Now listen. The one who comes from above is from above all, is above all. The one who is from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks as one from the earth. The one who comes from heaven is above all. And he's talking to his people because he understood who he was. He understood his oil. He understood his anointing. And he, like Jesus, come on here, had a supernatural, supernatural birth. But John's father was natural. You need to know this. Jesus' father was supernatural. But John was filled with the Holy Spirit in the womb. Watch this. But the womb of Mary was impregnated by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> See, distinctives. Yay, somebody write that word down. I feel God. Distinctives. Similar, but distinct. Similarities, but distinction. Similarities, but distinctions. But he knew, he knew, he knew, he knew, he knew, he knew. <laughs> Woo, watch this. Is it business? Is it marketplace? Where's your distinctive? Is it education? Is it family? Is it arts, entertainment? Is it government? Is it finance? Where, what, where is your oil? Woo, shikato. Come on, Dean. <laughs> watch this. The one who comes from above is from above. Now watch this. Verse 32. I'm in John 3. He testifies to what he has seen and heard. but No one accepts this testimony. The man who has accepted it has certified that God is true. For the one whom God has sent speaks the word of God. For God gives him the spirit without limit. For God gives 
him the spirit without limit, distinction. The most beautiful thing about Holy Spirit is his diversity of oil. How Holy Spirit takes the ingredients and gives us what it is we all need individually. This is why my oil will not work in your lamp. You can have ingredients because you have been associated or been in covenant. But you have to allow Holy Spirit with all of his knowledge and wisdom and foreknowledge and intelligence to give you that distinctive, that aroma, that different uh, flow, that different modality, that, that different approach, that different same gospel, same Bible, but we all talk about it within our distinctives. We all talk about it. We all see Paul. We all see James and Peter. We see Jesus. We see the old covenant through our lenses, through our distinctives. This is the diversity of the body of Christ. But you have got to be settled in what you're not in order for the oil to flow and to be effective. So John said, listen, you're not going to get me offended with Jesus. I know who he is. I know who I'm not. This is how Emmanuel Oh, glory to God. You can stand me in a room with several other powerful voices of God. We are all powerful in our own oil. And this is a lesson that we must embrace and learn. We've got to stop comparing oil. Good God Almighty, who am I talking to? Whoa, Holy Spirit, speak in this place. Stop comparing oil. Even though they may all be prophets, they all have distinctive oil. Even though they all may be psalmists, they all may be worshipers, they all may be Levites, but they all have a distinctive oil. You've got to understand, I, 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 I'm a musician uh, by profession. I was a music major uh, all the way through high school, my first year of college, uh, before I really got into nursing and didn't have the time in the school I went to, didn't have a, a, a orchestra or band, but I played first chair flute in high school until the girl came from the Orient and bumped me and I became second chair. <laughs> but her oil, my God, <laughs> praise God. I played violin and clarinet and harp and piano and organ, all of that. So that's those are giftings, amen, and training. So I, I'm a trained musician. I read music. I understand. I can read hymns. I can note read. I can sight read. I'm not as good as others now, but that's my original, my original gifting at four. I started playing the piano. Now, the thing that I learned as I went from elementary school and I went into junior high. We had junior high. We didn't have middle school. We had junior high. And my band teacher, Mr. Ernie Rogers, was an amazing musician, but he played particularly jazz. So he got me into jazz. I got into the jazz, uh, the jazz quartet, and, and I was playing clarinet. I played uh, uh, sax saxophone, and you know, just, I, I even played bass, bass fiddle. And uh, oh my God, I, I mean, you know, just just in music. Music was my major. I graduated Cast Tech High School. Uh, this year, I'm not going to tell y'all that. Y'all don't need to know that. <laughs> 50 years ago, praise God. But uh, I, 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 was, I was in the symphony orchestra. I was in the marching band. I'm a musician. But this is the thing I want you to understand. Flute became my primary instrument. And the sound of the flute is very different than the sound of a clarinet. The sound of a clarinet. It's very different than the sound of a saxophone. A soprano saxophone is very different than a 
baritone saxophone than a trumpet, than a trombone. Everything has its own sound. And the beauty of that in my understanding is that when I was playing my flute, practicing at home, when I was going through my music, when we were in section practice, <laughs> we had flute section, first chair, second chair, we would call uh, section rehearsal, and then we would come together in the band room. And when we came together in the band room and we all started practicing the pieces for the concerts, for the parades, for the different things, it was amazing how all of our rehearsals separate, all of our sounds separate, now somehow migrated together in such a way. So the way that the pieces were written understood the distinctive of the sounds of each instrument. And whoever was the composer had the responsibility of migrating all of those sounds. Mm. Now they do it electronically. You buy an electronic uh, piano and it has all these sounds in it. But we had to create the sounds. Real music is not created by a computer. Real music is created by musicians, by composers, by people who sit and write beautiful music. And then people who know their instrument, they come together in the Namondo Shaya. And even though they know their part, they don't know the trumpet's part. I played first chair flute when I was in junior high. I played first chair violin. Are you listening? I was in the harp and vocal. I, I understand how music works. Now, I knew my part, but I did not know the trombone's part. I didn't know what they had studied. I didn't know how they were going to bring it together. Come on, somebody. I, I didn't know what the clarinet, I didn't know what percussions. My God, we had so many percussion. I just thought there was drums, but there's so many percussion instruments. The cymbal guy and the boom 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 and the congo guy and all of these other sounds that were coming together. I had to play my part. Sometimes Mr. Dr. Arnaldi would tap, 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 stop, stop, stop. Flutes, let me hear y'all in that part. Uh, go from this section to that section, and we would play it. And it would sound really great. But then when everybody else, and you can do the same thing with choir. I sing alto. I know my part, but I'm not going to sing all three, four parts. Are you listening to me? And so when we would come together in the band and we would, we was we would be on the stage and, and we would we would eat na 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 say and we had to learn that music. We had to learn it. We went over and over it almost just in case you know we, we didn't have the music in front of us. We had to know our parts. But when we all came together, and this is the distinction of the anointing on your life. After you have entreated God. After you have gotten what it is that you're supposed to get, you have to realize that the only person that knows all of the parts is Holy Spirit. And so when you get out of your section and you try to play another instrument or another part, or you try to take your instrument and read the music of the clarinet or the music of the saxophone or the music of the trumpet or, oh, listen, when you, the tuba, when you try to do that, you mess up so much. And this is the source of your frustration. When that girl came from China, I think she was from Japan or China, that girl came in and auditioned. I, the, uh, the conductor didn't have to tell me I was moving this a second chair. I knew that for myself. Her skill set. 
the where, where she was, the pedagogy of, of her in her audition was so precise. He didn't have to say nothing. I just moved my little stuff over. I became the lesser. She became the great. Ain't no competition between me and you, babe. Now I had to teach her English, <laughs> but she knew what she knew. And she was my age, but her experience, the ingredients in her oil was different than mine. And the source of your frustrations, folks, is that we all have received Christ. We all have access to the Holy Spirit. We all have access to the gifts of the Spirit. We all have access to the Word of God. We all have access, but what we all don't have is the same oil. You got to understand this or you're going to be frustrated and you're going to frustrate people around you. You're going to frustrate people in your life. You're going to frustrate your leaders. You're going to frustrate your boss. You're going to, because you don't know your oil. You don't know it. What problem are you born to solve? Now, I got to go. I got to hurry up. Come on, come on. I got to go. I got to go back. Let's go back to Luke chapter four. Ooh, who am I teaching? Listen, I was over at the Burnett Mission and Baptist Church a couple of Sundays ago. That thing blessed me so good. I hadn't been out in a long time, and Dr. Johnson, he he got me. <laughs> he got me to come. I had to come when I saw it. And uh, good God, that baby can sing. Woo, Jesus. I I knew Johnson could sing, but for real. He got oil in that area. He has the oil. There's oil on him for that. I leaned over to Pastor Valerie and I said, that boy right there, that boy got oil. And he'd been teaching on the Holy Spirit. He's been encouraging the, and others of you have been working with him. And, yeah, and I love it. That's what we talked about these satellites. We talked about it. But I saw that oil. The oil is distinctive. It's distinctive in his life. And I got so blessed just watching how the oil flow people would get blessed when you're operating in your oil you don't have to say anything to them they just get blessed watching it you don't have to do you have to go out of your way when it's your oil you don't have to tug you you don't have to lie you don't have to manipulate if it's your oil people will identify it the reason that you are having a tough time you're trying to fit someplace where it's not your oil people cannot identify you might, it might be a good thing to do, but it's not the God thing. Y'all got to hear this. Oh, God, God, I got so blessed. I got so blessed. I saw Renee. I hadn't seen Renee Thomas in a long time singing. My God, yet anointed. Got, oil still flows. Where your oil is, it is without measure. Where your oil is, it's without measure. John's oil, listen, all the way in 19 of Acts. Come on, somebody. When, when Paul ran into those disciples up and down the coast of Ephesus, he said, well, wait a minute. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? He said, no. And then what baptism were you baptized? They said, John's. All the way. That oil was still working in their life. And, and Paul said, oh, okay, that was the baptism of repentance. See, that oil was still working in their lives. He said, but I'm going to introduce you to another baptism, which is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. See, now Paul is operating in his oil. When you operate, you're frustrated because you don't have oil for that. It is a great desire, saith the Lord. It is even a good thing, saith God. But it's not where you're anointed. And we've got to stay in our section. Oh, we're going to mess up the whole band fooling around trying to be every instrument because that's just what you like. That's just what you want to do. That's just what you've been around. No, you have got to understand that you are born to solve a problem. What problem is that? Listen, here it is. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. I'm going to solve this problem for God. God has a problem. 
and I'm going to solve Jesus of Nazareth. I'm going to solve this problem. What problem are you going to solve, Jesus? Well, uh, I'm going to help the poor. I'm going to preach to them a good news, a gospel message that is going to produce prosperity in their life. Come on, y'all ain't going to say nothing. What else are you going to do, Jesus? He said, listen, I'm going to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. Wow. All right. And what else are you going to do, Jesus? I'm going to preach the recovery of sight to the blind. Wow. And what else, Jesus? I'm going to release the oppressed. Is there anything else, Jesus? Yes. I am going to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. All right. All right. All right. John, what are you going to do? What problem are you going to solve? <laughs> John chapter number one. Glory to God. What problem are you going to solve? So, oh, so I'm going to baptize him. <laughs> if I don't do nothing else, that one of righteousness is where my oil is. And I'm going to baptize a million people until he comes. And when he comes, I know then I must decrease. Ooh, glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Everything that's born of God has a purpose in it. Everything that's born of God has purpose. You've got to decide. Okay, so what is my purpose? What is it? It's the problem you were born to solve. And you'll begin to notice it even as a child. I'm looking at this little grandbaby that we have in our family, little Alan. And I, I, I was just thinking about this yesterday, how uh, ain't nobody said, this baby can't talk. Not really, he speaks in tongues. But he can't talk. But already you can see the things that he's drawn to. He's drawn to sticks and he's kinesthetic. He's tactile. <laughs> my God, and he likes buttons, and he likes gadgets, and he likes noise, but he's fallen in love with drums, and his godmother bought him a little set of baby drums, and I'm telling you all day, all night, he's on, and he's walking around even in the church, and he gets with the percussion uh, team, and he gets over there, and he wants to hit the cymbals, and already, 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 see, what you don't like is what you were originally created for, you don't like that. You don't like that. You have not settled that. And along the way, you picked up all these other instruments. Along the way, you picked up all these other prophecies. Along the way, you done picked up all this other stuff. You done seen things like Eve in the garden. You done seen that the tree is good for fruit. Now you want that fruit. Okay, now you get someplace else and you see that that's good for prosperity. Now you want that. You're all over everything. That's why your oil don't flow. You receive God. You receive the word. You receive the Christ. You receive the Holy Spirit. Now, what has he anointed you for? And what has he not anointed you for? Where are you the greater? And where are you the lesser? Where are you the greater? Listen, if I stand flat-footed, I can teach, I can, I can, I can bring people to Christ. I, I, I have a people anointing on my life. I can bring people to the upper room. I can get you baptized in the Holy Spirit. I can get you to understand protocol and order and operations. I can teach you prayer and fasting. I can teach you organization and administration. Glory to God. I know where I flow. But then when a greater comes, I become the lesser because that's not my oil. Many of you are striving against something that you will never, ever conquer because it's just not your oil. A man can only receive what is given to him from heaven. If you don't learn another verse of scripture, there are two verses of scripture I want you to learn. I want you to go to the gospel of John and learn, I am not. And I want you to learn what I just gave you in chapter 3. A man can only receive what is given to him from heaven. If you get those two in your spirit, I'm telling you right now, 
I know what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a jackhammer. I'm seeing a bulldozer. I'm seeing things being broken up, being broken up because there's uh, things in there that, that don't belong. And it's all right. When you, when, you, when you have to go in and you have to reconstruct things, there is a demolition. So allow the word of God. Don't become offended by this word. Don't get offended by the word. Don't get offended by the word of God. Oh my God. Don't get offended. I don't care if you're there and you've been operating, but it's not successful. It's not flourishing. It's not thriving. Then there might be an answer. You've been praying and praying, but there might be an answer. There might not be where you're anointed. Ooh, shatana mahasaya. Handi o shekama mahaya. Re baba bahando shatana naniasia. My God, he can't have a motto. Ritu tosi kitatana. God, I thank you. Who God, hey God. And when you get in your position, come on here, Samuel. Samuel brought that what? Horn of oil, that cruise of oil. And all of those brothers, all those sons of Jesse came before the cruise of all, came before the prophet, and their oil would not flow. Samuel looked up at Jesse and said, do you have another son someplace? And he's a prophet, so you know he ain't asking what he don't already know. <laughs> he said, well, yes. Well, where is he? Well, he's out in the field. He's just a shepherd. His father had dissed him. His father had said, didn't even call him in because he was just so sure that those other boys was going to be the one that the prophet was looking for. He said, bring him in. They went and got, the Bible says, ruddy. Say he was ruddy. <laughs> he was ruddy. He wasn't, he wasn't like the rest of them. He wasn't like the rest of them. He was just a shepherd. All he could do was keep the sheep. Kill lions and tigers and bears. So his dad never even brought him in. Just was so sure. Oh, but lo and behold, <laughs> when David walked in that house, and Samuel lifted that cruise of oil. <laughs> and they all began to flow out. <laughs> oh, a man can only receive. That which is given to him from heaven. Nobody is a, com a competitor. <laughs> Nobody is a rival to what heaven has given you. Nobody is a rival. There is no competition where you are anointed. You just don't know. That causes frustration. That causes aggravation. A man can only receive what is given to him from heaven. Where you are anointed. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. And he has anointed me. What has he anointed you for? We're going to keep digging in it. We're going to keep digging and keep digging. We're breaking up the fallow ground. But we're going to keep digging. I got to go. <laughs> Glory to God. Look, like, tag, and share. Hit Pentecost in a pandemic. Praise God. We stayed on today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Thank God for Zoom. Thank God for free conference. Go to uh, YouTube and watch the replay and get this in your spirit. Woo, God, a man can only receive what is given to him from heaven. Oh, God, if we could get that in our spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I know this word is like a bulldozer. I know this word, even as it's coming forth out of my spirit, as it's coming forth out of my body, I can feel the shaking. I can feel it. I, I can sense it in the spirit that there's great uh, demolitions going on. But God, in Shaya, in Jesus' mighty name, uh, Holy Spirit, now come. It might not remove the debris. Oh, God, uh, and let not there be a fear. I hear what Jesus said. Uh, Blessed it is he who is not offended in me. Glory to God. Don't get offended. Oh, Baba, my God, your spirit. Oh, Holy Spirit, I thank you. 
I give you praise <laughs> that you're raising up a people. Glory to God. Oh, God, that will walk in rank. That will walk in order. That will walk in their oil, my God. And your measure is enough, saith the Lord. Your measure is enough. I got to go. <laughs> I love y'all. Hallelujah.